speed, velocity, and acceleration. We are starting with speed. What did you understand by speed? Speed is defined as the rate of change of distance with time. That is the meaning of speed. How do you represent speed in mathematical form? Or what is the formula for speed? An average speed is distance over time, which can also be written as change in distance divided by change in time, which is x over t, telling us that we represent distance by x and time by t. We can also rewrite it in a form that a final distance minus initial distance divide by final time minus initial time, which the same formula gives that x over t. The xi unit of speed is meter per second. So let's try to solve an example to relate what you, how to solve question relating to speed. Let's have an example. You see from here, the example said, a student walks a distance of 3 kilometers in 20 minutes. Calculate the average speed. If you are to find the average speed, average speed will be distance over time. And our distance is 3 kilometers. Why by our time is 20 minutes? So if our time is 20 minutes and you know that the kilometers which we now give us, so the 3 kilometers will be written as 3 times 1,000 of meter divide by 20 times 60 seconds. So if that should be the case, by the time you multiply 3 with, to give you 3,000 meter divide by 1,200 seconds. So the average speed now Average speed for the question will now be 2.5 meter per second. So that is the first example. As you know, what are the steps that we we'll pass through here is that we we'll try to convert, we we'll convert the given value like 3 kilometers and 20 kilometer to xi unit. So the moment you convert to XI unit, you get 3,000 meters divided by 1,200 seconds. So our average speed now gives us 2.5 meter per second. So let's solve the example 2. The example 2. A driver traveling at a speed of 115 km per hour received a text message on his mobile phone. How far is E in kilometer 20 seconds later after from when he received the text? So, you all know that the 
average speed formula we have average speed is equal to as has given we have the distance over time distance over time but what we need here is how far is e in kilometers meaning that we need distance we now be average speed that is average speed times time so that are, that is what we now so what is our average before time before that we are given the time to be in 20 seconds and recall that we are to find the answer in kilometers so therefore the 20 seconds will now be you want to convert the 20 seconds to hour it will be 20 over 60 times 60 that is 3600 all days will be written in hours so this is how you are going to write it so if you are to write 20 seconds, 20 seconds will be converting to days. So now, now to find our distance, our distance will now be, distance will now be speed times time. And our speed times time will one. So we were given the speed to be 115 kilometer per hour divided by hour times you know we have a calculator this will be 20 over 3600 we represent this in hours so therefore hours we cancel hours it will remain kilometers so it will now give you two thousand three hundred over three thousand six hundred kilometer so by the time you apply your calculator to this you have oh point six four kilometer so there's no reach one kilometer so that is how to solve these uh, questions you able to see that the driver travel had a speed of 115 km per hour. The C with text message on his mobile phone. How far is he in kilometer 20 seconds later from when he received the text solution? Average speed, as we all know, is distance over time, and our distance is average speed times time. You will recall that our time is 20 seconds. We convert it to hours. So in the process of converting it to hours, we, are, we get 20 over 3600. So we now apply the formula again. Hour we cancel hours. Now remain 2300 divided by 3600. So we have, that is just the meaning of average speed so now i want to explain what you call velocity 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 is defined as a rate of change of distance moved with time in a specified direction it can also be defined as the rate of change of displacement with time so we have formulas for velocity velocity is displacement divided by time you can also call it change in displacement divided by change in time you can also say final displacement minus initial displacement divided by 
final time minus initial time. However, speed is used in place of velocity and vice versa. So, the units of velocity is meter per second. So now, we don't want to talk about, after this, we also define accelerations and decelerations and so we now go for that for a, a, a little calculation. The rectilinear acceleration, the term rectilinear acceleration means the rate of increase of velocity along a straight line path in a unit time. That is the meaning of rectilinear acceleration. The, the rate at which uh, a car is moving, accelerating. When the velocity of an object change, it could be said accelerate or decelerate. That, that does not mean it's accelerating or decelerating. You can't determine because it can change to backward. It can also change to the forward. But in the, the, the way too, they can, they can accelerate or decelerate. So, acceleration is defined has the increased rate of change of velocity with time. So, when it is increasing, it means it's accelerating. Whereby, deceleration, in other hand, is defined as decreasing rate of change of velocity with time. So, when it is, when you are applying a brake, you are decelerating. So, that's why you call it Deceleration, on the other hand, is defined as a decrease, decreasing the rate of change of velocity with time. Therefore, deceleration is also called retardation or negative acceleration. Any moment you try to calculate an acceleration and you, your answer gives you minus, it means uh, it is a deceleration. Or retardation. So, the formula for acceleration and retardation is the same. Change in velocity divided by time taken for the change. Final velocity minus initial velocity divided by final time minus initial time. So now we are going purely to the calculation, to the equations of motions, equation one, equation two, equation three, and others, and how can we apply these? To everyday activities. Equation of motion. The first equation of motion. If a body at rest or already moving with an initial velocity u measured in meter per seconds begins to accelerate at a meter per second scale after a particular time t seconds. It will, it will obtain a final velocity v in meter per seconds. So, before we continue, let's first define acceleration. We said will be defined by a change in velocity over time taking. But recall, I said from the formula the other times, I said. Acceleration can be defined as final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time interval. So, we're able to see that from the analysis that we give, he said the final velocity minus initial divided by time taken. So, this has formed a mathematic form, mathematic pattern. A can be 1 over A is equal to V minus U over t. Let's try to cross multiply. 
to have v minus u times 1 is equal to a times t. So v minus u is equal to a t. So let's try to make the v as a subject of the formula. So we have our v to be equal to u plus a t. So we call this one equation one. So, but in physics, we call it the first equation of motion. First equation of motion. So this is first equation of motion. So let us all prove the second equation of motion. Second equation of motion. The second equation of motion can be derived if we consider that a body moving with uniform or constant acceleration must have had an initial u before attaining a final velocity. Do you believe that the average velocity average velocity because he, he used the initial and the final so the, let the average velocity be u plus v over 2 that is the average velocity we have to consider that so in having an average velocity but to recall that the first equation is u plus a t so now the average velocity is equal to u plus u plus a t all divided by 2 which is equal to 2u plus a t divided by 2. But can you still remember that the formula being given to us from the beginning that an average velocity given to us that an average velocity is distance divided by time which is equal to x over t so if an average is also distance over time and you know that we are able to prove that an average also is 2u plus a t divided by 2 let's try now and equate it together to have to have uh, the so by equating the, the two together we have x over t is equal to u plus before u plus uh, that is 2u plus a t over 2 which is the same thing as 2u divided by 2 plus a t divided by 2 so which we now have x over t is equal to the two we cancel the we have two u plus a t divided by two so let's try to cross multiply and let's see what we are going to get so in cross multiply we have x is equal to u t plus u plus a I will give you a t squared over 2 so that, that is the value a t over 2 sorry we have to follow the value here so yes give you a t squared yeah good correct so 
Let me try to put it up. So we have, should now give you a t squared divided by 2. So x is equal to ut plus 1 over 2 a t squared. So we call this one equation 2, which we call the second equation of motion. The second equation of motion. So this is second equation of motion. Equation of motion. A combination of facts and a second equation of motion yield the third equation of motion. Now the first equation of motion uh, says that V is equal to U plus A T. So let's scare the both side. Scare the both. So when you scare the both side, we have a value like V square is equal to U plus A T square. So in having a question like this, you have to apply a quadratic form of x plus y square, which will give us x plus y onto x plus y. So you have to apply this formula to this. So now, in having uh, a, a, a solution like this, what we need to do is now let's get a both side. So we have V square is equal to U plus A T. You open a bracket and you close. So you you expand it one by one. U times U, you give us u squared u times a t you have plus u a t a t times u you have u a t a t times a t you have plus a square t square so now when you now have a square t square but let's try to do something that we call it uh, collecting like times u squared plus 2u a t plus a square t square. So we have uh, something like this, but we can still remember that there's a there is the second uh, equation said x is equal to u t plus half of a t square that we proved. Now, how could we remove something like this from this equation? Let's try to remove it. Let's find something doing that will make it too. Let's have like V square is equal to U squared plus. Let's try to say 2A divided by 2A. You know, 1, 2. It will still give you the same thing. 2AT plus a square t square now in view of this what you just try to do is you want to multiply them together to have b square is equal to u square plus so let's try to uh, uh use this to multiply but you win uh you will not let me just say what I'm what I want to do plus let's say that 2a is common 2a on 2. Now you have 2u, you do not you do not multiply 2u a t a t plus divide by 2a now plus a t squared divide by 2a. You know, 
if you try to remove the, these two a it will come outside like this you know what i'm trying to do that let us zoom the two in the, the denominator i just try to factorize in a way that this hey we cancel a these two we cancel two a we cancel a this one this is i'm just trying to bring the factorization out to have plus two a onto there's two have cancelled each other remain ut plus a has cancelled remain a here one a and t squared divided by two so this is what i'm trying to do so and i've written before that you have ut plus half a t squared so instead of not writing this you can design how to write x so that is already proven so we have v squared is equal to u squared plus 2ax so that is equation 3 and this is this is what i want to just prove just ability to factorize to remove the value of x so that is the third law of equation so we still have to explain some facts so let's write it one by one to get what we are able to have discussed since the equation of motion uh, the first one is v is equal to u plus a t and the second one after we have proved is s is equal to u t plus half a t squared and the third one is v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 a s where u is initial velocity in meter per seconds and v is final velocity in meter per seconds t time in seconds x distance in meter a is the acceleration a uniform acceleration or deceleration in meter per second square there's some fact which you need to understand in solving a problem relating to uh velocity and acceleration when an object move or accelerate from rest its initial velocity u is equal to zero when a body comes to stop its final velocity v is equal to zero therefore when a body's velocity is constant or not changing its acceleration is equal to zero so these are the three facts that you need to understand very well before solving any question relating to velocity and fear accelerations question so let's start solving an examples that relates to heat and let's see how it works a particle accelerates uniformly from rest at 6.0 meter per second square for eight seconds you know, let me read the question again. A particle accelerates uniformly from rest at 6.0 meter per second square for 8 seconds and then decelerate uniformly to rest, meaning that the velocity comes to rest. In the next 5 seconds, determine the magnitudes of deceleration. You know, the first thing is that it decelerates to rest from a particular velocity which was attained during acceleration so you are to calculate the velocity attained as follow now before doing that so we were given so we were given the initial velocity initial velocity u is equal to zero and from the question we're given the acceleration to six meter per second scale because there is one acceleration is being used before you are to calculate the acceleration so t you firstly accelerate before calculating the acceleration so the final velocity is unknown so in view of this so you have to apply the formula v is equal to u plus a t now we will be given 
that our u is 0 plus our a is 6 and our time is 8. So, which will give us 48 meter per second. So, why? Because the unit of velocity is meter per second. That is why anytime you are calculating velocity, make sure you write 48 meter per second. Make sure you write the unit of the velocity. Now, he has able to have calculate the velocity he attained when he's been uh, accelerating. Now, the next thing, the particle decelerate to rest from a velocity of 48 meter per seconds. So, meaning that our initial, the, this velocity has now turned because you have to, since he said, particle decelerate to rest. He said, let me write it out to make it easy. The particle, the particle decelerate, decelerate to rest from, from a velocity of 48 meter per second. So, this my statement has now turned the velocity I calculated first, which is final velocity, but this statement has now turned into initial velocity to now have it has turned into initial velocity to have u u is now equal to 48 meter per seconds and our final velocity now turned to zero because and from the question they say for the next five seconds if you're able to read the question very well t is equal to five seconds so the acceleration which we call deceleration is an unknown so we see apply the same formula to have we apply the same formula to have our v is equal to u plus a t now our v is zero our initial velocity is 48 plus deceleration at is times five we call it acceleration until the value that we get determines how decelerating it might be so let's turn this 48 to this side. We have minus 48 equal to 5a. So meaning that 5a is got to minus 48. So therefore, let's divide the both sides by 5. Let's divide both size by 5. So we have 5a over 5 is equal to minus 48 over 5. So now we have the value of our a is equal to a is equal to so by the time we divide we have minus 9.5 six meter per second scale so because of the minus that is what we call it deceleration so it has been decelerate so that is just answered for the question so that is how we solve an examples relating to velocity and acceleration we are thinking to solve as much as possible examples on this let's see another beautiful example so said a body accelerates uniformly from rest at a rate of 3 meter per second square for 8 seconds. Calculate the distance covered by the body during acceleration. As I've said earlier, let's try to write the variable given. A body accelerates uniformly from rest, telling you that the initial velocity is equal to 0. Initial velocity is equal to 0 meter per second. Now, and the time given, that is T, is equal to 8 seconds. Uh, and the distance given is equal to unknown. So if you have a question like this, you know, we are able to pick out the variables 
from the question given. He said, a body accelerates uniformly from rest. Which have been proved the other time that any moment from rest means that our u is equal to zero. So and uh, acceleration given at the rate of we are given an acceleration at the rate of three meter per second. That is sorry, I did not write it here. So a is three meter per second square. So we are given time to be eight seconds. So let's use this variable. So you will now think. Anytime you want to solve a physics specialist on this, any given uh, variable to you, you will find a suitable formula to use. You see that equation 2 is very suitable to use here, plus half a t square. So therefore, let's try to substitute the value to have s is equal to how are you, you know, it is 0, is 0 times 8 plus half times acceleration times seconds that is eight seconds so we have zero has gone zero plus half times three times 64 so so in having you able to see now that so which the value of x will now be 2 divided by 64. We have 32. 3 times 32. So the final answer here will now be 96 meters. So that is all. So it depends on the how you're able to uh, uh, analyze the, the question to make it to get it better because you have been given 0 times acceleration. You have to find distance. So we only apply the formula. We are still going to solve as much. Just stay to watch the video to the end. Also, if the Facebook cannot contain all the video, click the link up you direct to the YouTube to get the full package of this video free. So now on to solve another example. Now, this is another beautiful example. He said, starting from rest, Olushegun ka accelerate uniformly at 25 meter per second square for 30 seconds what distance does it cover in the one lakhs one seconds of the motion two 17 sec 17 second of motion so these are the little a little logical uh questions but before that let's try to write the variable out let's write solution so the he said the distance in the last one seconds of the motion it is the distance cover between the time interval of 29 seconds and 30 seconds so that is so it is calculated by subtracting the distance in 29 seconds from that of 30 seconds so what well, that is you just said distance distance x is equal to the distance of 30 minus the distance of 29 and you still have to understand that the distance of 30 what would just be different there is our time variable when the time is 30 and when the time is uh, 29 so hence we're able to know that uh, our Initial value that's because it starts from rest. Our initial velocity is equal to zero, acceleration is equal to 25 meter per second square, and our time is 30 seconds. So, therefore, let's just try to apply the formula to it and have a solution like x is equal to ut plus half a t square. But recall. And our time has now been different, so it be zero times. What is our time? Uh, zero times t plus half a t square. Recall that zero times times must I be giving you an zero again? We have half a t square, but our t has now turned to t of 30 minus t 
t of 29. So the t of 30 and t of 29. So we now have x is equal to. So now the t of, since our t has t, that be half onto the value of a. What is the value of a given is 25. To multiply so you know is t square and the t of 30 to be 30 squared minus 29 uh, square so therefore our x is now equal to 12.5 on so 30 square will give you 900 minus 841 so which is 12.5 times 59 so just because of the analysis we able to have done so far so let's try to press our calculator i have able to press it here before starting the work so my final answer here is 737.48 meter so therefore let's try to approximate it to have 737.50 uh meter so that is just the value now so that is the this that is the distance is covered in the last one second so please i want you to try to note everything i have said about it so now the second question says that the 17th you have to study the second question he said number two the seventeenth time and uh, the seventeenth times the seventeenth seconds is actually the time interval between the sixteenth and the seventeenth second. So our t we now change to the t of seventeen minus t of sixteen. So we apply the same formula also because our x because has turned to half a t square so x will now give us one over two times uh, 25 onto 17 squared minus 16 squared so we have s is equal to 12.5 onto so 17 squared will give us 289 minus 16 squared will give us 256 so which will be 12.5 times 33 so the final answer will be 412.5 meter so that is just the solution so what i just believe that by the time you're able to understand the facts of the seconds and when, when you have a question relating to this it will be very easy for you to solve so let's also go further for another meaningful example example and another example a body uniformly accelerates from rest at eight meter per second square in how much time will the body travel a distance of 2.5 kilometer you are able to see from here that uh, we're given eight meter per seconds but recall i said Anybody traveling from rest, the initial velocity will be equal to zero. And in how much time, that is our t is unknown. I will recall that we were given a little distance. We were given a distance to be 2.5 kilometer. Let's try to convert our distance now that x is 2.5 kilometer. Remember, one kilo is 1,000 of meter. So, 2.5 times 1,000 meter. So, which will give us 2,500 meter. So, now, let the formula to use, since the variable given is, we are given acceleration uniform and distance. And we have to find time. So, we have to consider the variable given Let's find the time through this. So therefore, let's use the value x is equal to ut plus half at 
square. So therefore, the distance is 2,500 meter is equal to zero times time plus half times our acceleration is eight times t square. So 2,500 is equal to the two we cancel eight. We give us four t square. So let's try to divide both sides or let's rearrange first. 40 square is equal to 2,500. So, in having this, let's divide both sides by 4. Is equal to 2,500 divided by 4. So, this we cancel this. So, the value of our T will now be, so we have uh, T square is equal to 2,500. 100 divided by 4. So now what you do is let's find the square root of the both side. The square root of both side we have the square root of t square is equal to square root of 2500 over 4. From the law of sort, it lets us to know that we have the root of 2500 over uh, root 4 which is 50 uh, which is 50 divided by 2 and our time our time now our time now 50 is called 25 seconds so that is all so the time give the from the question he said in how much time will be the body traveled at this time of 2.5? So it will travel the body it will travel at times of 25 seconds. So you see, I've just stay try to watch this video to the end. You will know every step used to solve any physics uh, calculations relating to speed, velocities, and acceleration. So let's have another example. A particle start from rest and moves with a uniform acceleration of 4 meter per second square. What is its velocity after covering a distance of 8 meter? So now, we will be, since it started from rest, our initial velocity u is equal to is zero meter per seconds. Our acceleration given is four meter per second square. Recall that, and the question is that what is the velocity after covering? So it means we have to find the final velocity. But most important is to consider. You see that the equation contain u a x and v so because because it covers a distance of 8 meter so since it covers a distance of 8 meter so what are the formula to use so it is a, it is a variable given to you that determine the equation of motion to use so therefore Let's find a reasonable equation of motion to use. So let's use that v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as because how the variable will have is in this uh, formula. So let's try to substitute that our value will be given the v, which we don't know, and initial velocity is zero plus 2 times what is the acceleration our acceleration given is 4 and what is the distance 8 meter so we have our v square is equal to 0 now 2 times 4 that is 8 8 times 8 give us 64 so therefore find the square root of the both side v square is equal to square root of 64 so this we cancel this, our V will now be in physics. You don't need to write plus or minus 8 meter per second. So that is, I'm just trying to solve all 
areas of where you can see a questions. So you're able to know what exactly formula to use. So this is just the answer for these uh, solutions which I'm able to like see that the particle starts from rest, move with the uniform acceleration of 4 meter per second square. What it is velocity after covering a distance of 8 meters. So we are given U, A, V. So U, A, S, and V are the value in the formula. So we have to use V square is equal to U square plus 2 A, S, and our V is equal to 8 meter per second. Those are the things that you have to follow. So also, let's say continue. You see, I have many examples to solve today. So just stay tuned. A motor is traveling at 120 km per hour. Sees a broken down truck at the middle of the road and immediately applied his brake and comes to a stop with uniform retardation in 20 seconds what distance does the car travel after the brake were applied so now after the brake you know number one thing you, you have to consider that the initial velocity given to us because we are to calculate the retardation because it applies a break. It is not decelerating any longer. This, this speed has been reducing because it's come to zero. It will end up coming to zero because when he saw the truck ahead of him, it app immediately applied the break. So it's decelerating. So the moment it's decelerating, we have our initial velocity to be 120 km per hour. And the time is used is 20 seconds. So we want to calculate the distance is covered at that short period of the time. So let's firstly let's firstly convert this one to meter per second, the velocity. So let's try to do that. So now let's convert it. We have 120 kilometer per hour will be 120 times 1000 meter over 60 by 60 seconds by the time you apply your calculator we have 33.33 meter per second so we are able to convert it to meter per second as, as i've said early so meaning that our initial velocity is 33 meter per seconds and our final velocity is equal to zero why because it comes to an end it stop with the uniform retardation and the time used is 20 seconds so the first thing you have to do now let's find the retardation retardation is final velocity minus initial velocity times zero and what is our initial velocity what is our final? Our final is 0 minus 33.3 .3 over 20 seconds. So, by the time you do that, our retardation now gives us minus 1.67 meter per second. Okay. So, that is just our retardation. But the question is this. He said, what? Our question is, he said, what distance does a car travel after the break? So now, so since you're able to get the retardation, you now want to calculate the distance. We can apply this formula to have v squared is equal to u squared plus 2ax. So, therefore, let's try to make x as a subject of the formula to have v squared minus u squared is equal to 2ax and 2ax is equal to b squared minus u squared so let's divide both sides by 2a we have our x is equal to v squared minus u squared over 2a so that is all therefore we have 0 squared minus 
33.33 square over two brackets open minus 1.67 so now let's try to multiply it and get the value so therefore we have x is equal to minus 1110.89 divided by minus 3.34 so our this the distance is covered is three hundred and two point six zero meter. So that is just the basic explanations of what he has the distance has covered because we are able to get retardation through the variable given. So I don't believe any question is so difficult in solving, especially when you're able to understand the tricks and what exactly to use to get the exact values so that's all so let's also continue because we are still going to instantaneous speed velocity and instantaneous acceleration and we're still going to talk about the graphical solutions to problems in rectilinear acceleration where we solve the graphical problems of so many we're able to draw graph and solve many questions so don't just stay here and say you have stopped watching this video try to watch it to the end also don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow our page in facebook and all that so just stay tuned to watch everything we do and make sure you write your notes don't just try to watch it alone also share this video to the people that you believe they need it all this is another beautiful example a body which is uniformly retarded come to rest in five seconds after traveling a distance of 10 meter what is its initial velocity now if you're able to study this uh, question very well you discover that uh the the there is no acceleration or retardation in these questions and how the three equations of motion contains retardation and acceleration. So, now the first you are going to do is, you are firstly going to find the accelerations or retardation in any forms. So, let's try to do something now. You know, let's apply this formula to our V is going to U plus AT. But before then, we were given... A body which is uniformly retarded come to rest, meaning that the final velocity is equal to zero meter per second. That is just the meaning first, because it's come it's retarded. So and the time given is five seconds, and maybe and our distance s is ten meter. So now let's use this variable to to look for our solution. So therefore. If our v is this and initial velocity is zero, we have zero. Zero is equal to u plus. We are not given here, but we are given t to be five seconds. Go to five t. So minus five t is equal to u. So our t is now minus u over five. Our h, hey, sorry, our a. So our a now is equal to minus u plus a t. This is trying to so making. Let me try to clean it better to make it uh, meaningful. So uh, we have u plus five a. Yeah, good. So now so therefore we have. 5a so we have a so a is now minus u over 5 so let's just try to use another equation of motion so whereby we can able to have a meaningful answer so recall that v squared is equal to u squared plus 2ax now and 
our you we need you you we need you because from the question he said what is initial velocity so therefore let's try to make u squared as a subject of the formula we have u squared is equal to v squared minus 2 a x now let's now start so our v is zero minus two times what is value of a minus u over five now times 10 so uh, times 10 so therefore if you have been able to do this meaning that u square is equal to so minus times minus will surely give you plus first so now five year one five in ten two so two times two will give us four u so if it is now for you let's divide all through by you let's divide all through by you so we have u squared over u is equal to four u over u so if you cancel u you will now be this can be making four meter per second so the initial velocity from this beautiful question is four meter per second so don't forget again to subscribe to these channels and follow us in our uh, youtube page and uh, youtube uh, channels and facebook uh, page Tenyong speed of velocity this is defined as the actual speed of velocity of an object at a particular point in time. This is how we apply uh, differentiations. That is the change in x, change in t at a particular time when t is 10 to 0, we have the x dt. The, the instantaneous speed at a particular instance has the same value has the average speed provided two conditions are met. There are two conditions you have to consider. The particular instant must be included in change in time. Because you must say change in time. The ratios change in distance per change in time must cover a very small part of distant time curve that is nearly a straight segment. These are the two conditions that must meet that the ratios of the SDT must cover a very small part of distant time curve. That is a nearly a straight line segment. So that is about the instantaneous velocity. At the same time we have instantaneous acceleration. Instantaneous accelerations at a given instant T is defined as the rate of change of velocity with time during infinitesimally small intervals of times that include desired instant of T. Therefore, acceleration, the instantaneous acceleration is changing V to change in time at a particular at when the T tends to zero. So, therefore, it means the differentiation of the V, the T. So, let's have an example relating to instantaneous velocities and acceleration. So, calculate the instantaneous velocity at 7 seconds of a rocket undergoing uniformly accelerated motions. If the position is given by X, is equal to 5t plus 12t square, where x is in meter and t is in seconds. But I will, before I will solve this, we are going to do a little bit of revisions about calculus, that is different section. You know, in different section, if you are having the value of y to be x raised to power n 
in, in differentiating the y, the h, the index will come here to have n minus 1. So that is how we differentiate. So we're going to use the same thing applicable to the distance given that x is equal to 5t plus 12t square. So, but what we need is changing x to changing t. That is the value that we need. The change in x to change in t. So, in differentiating this, it will be 5t onto 1 minus 1, because there is a 1 here, plus 2 times 12 onto t, which is... Uh, 2 minus 1. It will give us 5t0 now plus 24t. Recall that anything raised to the power 0 is 1. So the value will give you 5 plus 24t. So telling us that the x, the t, The x, the t, is equal to 5 plus 24t. But to recall, we were given the time at 7 seconds. So, for the fact that we were given at 7 seconds, so to now know the velocity, which is the x, the t, will now be 5 plus 24 to multiply 7, which will give us the total you give us 5 plus. So let's try to press calculator. Also press calculator on your sides. As you are watching this video, let's press our calculator to know the value of exactly uh, what we need. So 24 uh, times 7, 24 times 7 uh, times 7. They give us 168. So 168. So the, the total value will now be 173 meter per second. So that is just the value for the instantaneous velocity. Because you say calculate the instantaneous velocity. So that is all how to solve this. So let's also have another meaningful example that explains instantaneous velocity so another meaningful example is the velocity v of a space shuttle in a time t is given as v is equal to 25 plus 3t square find the instantaneous acceleration at time t is equal to 9 seconds so in finding V, I want you to remember one thing that in differentiation, when you are differentiating constant, it surely gives you zero. So therefore, to now get instantaneous acceleration, instant instantaneous acceleration, which is the V the t it will not give you is zero plus two times three onto two minus one which is sixty so by applying the time t the time given is nine seconds so we are applying the time t to what is given so we have sixty we now give you 60 will be 6 times 9. How you know that is 54 meter per second. So that is just how to find instantaneous velocity and acceleration. So now we are now able to move to the graphical solutions to problems in rectilinear acceleration. And uh, we have to understand the graphical terms before we go deep into the calculation that involve in it. So, don't forget, if you are new in watching this video, don't forget to subscribe 
and follow us, like and share every of things that you see, especially to those that you believe the remaining in. So let's go to the graphical solutions of uh, the graphical solution to problems in rectilinear acceleration. Uh, there's some uh, varieties of uh, graph. The following are various of uh, velocity time graph. There's a one which is object moving with constant velocity. You see it? Let me expand sheet this very well to you. This is velocity. This is the time. So A and B are moving with a constant velocity. So that is why we say object moving with constant velocity. This is how the graph, in an exam, if you have to draw the graph, this is how to draw the graph of an object moving with a constant velocity. So the other one is velocity time graph for an object accelerating from rest. This is how it looks like, accelerating from rest. You know, I used to say that when it started from rest and initial velocity is called zero, it starts at this point moving on to A, from O to E. This is the velocity meter per second. This is the time in seconds. So this graph illustrates to all that velocity time graph for an object accelerating from rest. You see this how it looks like. So, because in case you are drawing many diagrams to solve for a particular problem, so you surely get it how we do it. So let's have the number three. Now, this is another one. Velocity time graph for an object decelerating to rest. You see, as I've said earlier, it's decelerating as well as zero. It's moving from hop. When you apply the brake, you are decelerating. So, it moves from hop to down. So, this is velocity coming down. This is the graph for deceleration. So, all these three graphs is important for you to understand especially when a question is being asked to solve. So now, we now want to solve questions relating to, to the exact, uh, uh, to the graph. How we can be used now, be using the graph to solve it. So let's listen to this example. Moving with uniform acceleration, A, hax 2 points, 5, 15, and 20, 20, 60. On the velocity time graph of his motion, so therefore, in, a, in having this, let's write out the first, the first point, the point one, we have two points, five, which equivalent to x1, y1, and the point two, which is 20, 60, and equivalent to x2, y2. So now, let's try to draw a sketch that equivalent to the graph. Let me draw a sketch. So, from the graph, so let's draw a graph as I've said earlier. So, the x1, y1, and x2, y2, let's see how it looks like. Now, this is the graph. That this is the 60, the point in, in the y axis we have 60 and we have 15. In the x1 is 5 and x2 is 20. So, therefore, in the process, Let's find the slope of AB to get exactly so the slope of AB will give us the accelerations of the Cartesian graph given and others. So therefore the slope the slope of AB will be equal to A which at the same time also changing y over changing x is called a y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is equal to 60 minus 15 over 20 minus 5. 
So which is equal to 45 over 15, which will give you 3.0 meter per second scale. So that is just the formula for that. So we have a reasonable example here. A car runs at a constant speed of 15 meter per second for 300 seconds and then accelerate uniformly to a speed of 25 meter per second over a period of 20 seconds. This speed is maintained for 30 seconds. Draw a velocity time graph to represent the journey described above. From the graph, find. These are the things you have to find. Acceleration, why the journey, why the velocity change from 15 meter per seconds to 25 meter per seconds. The total distance traveled in the time described. The average speed over the time described. So now, how do we draw this? Now, in drawing this, you know, a car travels at a constant speed of 15 meter per second for 300 seconds. Let's draw that one only. Let's now try to analyze this I've drawn. So it moves. A car travels at a constant speed of 15 meter per second. This is it. It reaches here for 300 seconds. So this is the three. So this is what it moves for 300 seconds. Now, this is where it now accelerates. He said, then accelerates uniformly at a speed of 25 meter per second scale. So, it reaches here to accelerate over a period of 20 seconds. So, the 20 plus 300 will give us 320 seconds. So, from C, you know, say, this speed is maintained for 300 seconds again before the car brought to rest so the moment you move from here to from c to d meaning that for another 300 seconds so 300 plus 320 will give us 300 plus 320 will give us 620 seconds therefore from the question you now continue to say that he said before the car brought to rest with uniform deceleration in 30 seconds, when I mean it applied the brake. So the 30 plus 620 will now give us 650. So the question, the first question says that let's look up the first question again. The first question said the acceleration, why the velocity change from 15 meters per second. To 20 meter per seconds in 20 seconds you know that is just see from the question above he said the speed of is as a uniformly with the speed in a period of 20 seconds so let's now solve question one the question one now says you know that we have been given from that, in our initial velocity will be 15 meters because it firstly moved this one before it accelerates. So it, it, it has been having a uniform velocity and it has a final velocity to be 25 meters per second. And the time used at that period is 20 seconds. So getting the acceleration will be the snow for that, for the we beat the slope of the CJ to the BJ. That will just be the slope. So which will be... Let me show you what I'm trying to explain. It will be from here to this place. The slope of BC, you are considering the angle of BCG to calculate the acceleration. But it has been obey a certain uniform velocity. 
that is why we still have uniform velocity. We now have acceleration is equal to the slope BC, which is equal to CJ over the BJ, will now give us 25 minus 15 over 320 minus 300. How does he have the 300? Because it has started the time for 300 seconds to achieve an initial velocity. Therefore, the acceleration for the vex values will now give us 10 over 20, which is equal to 1 over 2, which is equal to 0.5 meter per second square. That is just the value for the acceleration. But the second question says that. Now let's consider the second question. It said the total distance traveled in the in the time described. How could we get the total distance travel? Let's consider the the, the the triangle. Now, what I'll just use my mouth to explain for you now is that to calculate the total distance travel, the area of rectangle. A, B is 0, H plus the area of trapezium H, B, C, A plus area of rectangle G, C, D, F plus area of rect rect uh, triangle F, D, E. So you start be, so let's start be using it one by one. For you to get it clearly, let me re-explain again. The area of rectangle A, B, H, 0 plus the area of trapezium H, B, C, J plus area of rectangle G, C, D, F plus area of triangle F, D, E. So, Having the total of this area together will give you the total distance cover. So let me write it for better explanation. Let me write it out to give us a better explanation. So as I've said earlier that the total distance cover will be the area of rectangle OABH which will be a B times B H plus the area of trapezium H B C J, which will give you half H G to B H plus C G now plus the area of rectangle. G C D half, which will be C D times D F now plus the area of triangle half D E, which will be half onto F E times D F. So now, in view of this, we now just give us that 300 times 15 plus half times 20 onto 15 plus 25 plus 300 times 25 plus half times 30 times 25 that is half base times height so let's write it out so the multiplication of 315 will give us 4500 plus this is 40 40 divided by 2 will give us 20 20 times 20 will give us 400 now plus 300 times 25 it give us 7,500 plus 
that is uh, 15 times 25 will give us 375. So the total of this will give us 1, 2, 7, 7, 5 meter. So that is the total value of the answer. That is the total distance covered. So if we are to fill the question three, the question three says of the question is said, we are to find the the three. Let me write it out. He said the average speed. The average speed over the time described. The average speed. Now the average speed will be the total distance. Uh, the total distance traveled uh, divided by total time taking which will give us that the total distance travel is one two seven seven five over if we're able to study from the diagram i'd like to show you this because you must able to get the diagram very well you see that the overall distance here is 650 seconds so therefore we must use the six hundred and fifty seconds here. Six hundred and fifty seconds. So the total speed cover is nineteen point sixty five meter per seconds. So therefore, that is just the answer for that question. So that is when you try to redo it again to get it better. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So let's solve another beautiful example. A car starts from rest at a checkpoint A and comes to rest at next checkpoint B, six kilometers away. From this question, you could have able to know that we have been given the total distance cover in three minutes. Remember, three minutes. It will be 3 times 60, we have 180 seconds. It has, it has first a uniform acceleration for 40 seconds. That is the first uniform acceleration for 40 seconds. Then constant speed. And it brought to rest with a uniform retardation after 20 seconds. The question now said that sketch a velocity time graph of the motion. Determine one, maximum speed. Two, the retardation. So, this is where we are going to. In getting a maximum speed, we are being given the maximum speed to be we were given 6 kilometer, which can be written as 6 times 1,000, which will give you 600 meter. And we were given 3 minutes. The total journey is this, 3 minutes, which is in seconds. But the question says that at first, he had the 40 seconds for uniform acceleration from here to this place, he has a 40 seconds. This is it. Then a constant, this is it, a constant uniform speed, which is uniform speed and for to the race with a uniform retardation of 20. So before it's retarded to 20, you know it's 180, meaning that you have to subtract 20 from Y to give you 160. That's all the meaning. So, therefore, the total distance traveled will now be total 
distance, which is 600, 6,000 meters, we give you, we be the area of trapezium will be equal to area of trapezium AD CB. So that is just so in getting the total distance covered will be the area of the trapezium AD C B hand you know the meaning of area of trapezium our height will be VT that is the the maximum velocity and is zero this is a zero this is a but we net at a zero to 180 plus 160 minus 160 minus 40 so let me write it out to to bring out the meaningful solution to it now. So total distance cover will now be, will now give us 6,000 is equal to half onto AB plus DC plus DC times VT. So times VT. So making 6,000 is equal to half onto, you know, I've said earlier that the total time plus 160 minus 40 will give you 120 times the VT. So, which you now give us, let me put it here, VT onto half times 300 is equal to 6,000. So how do we get 300? 120, 180 plus 120 will surely give us 300. So the half of 300 will give us 150. So 2 here, 1. 2 here, 150. Make it VT onto 150 is equal to 6,000. So now, Let's divide both sides by 150. So therefore, VT onto 150 divided by 150 is equal to 6,000 over 150. This, we cancel this. Our VT, that is the, the maximum velocity, we now give us 40 meter per second so that is the maximum velocity so now and the second question said that you should find retardation a and retardation a is equal to the slope of cd let me show you where the cd is c that is a d yeah c that is, the, your retardation will be CB. This is what you mean by retardation. This is retardation. It retardates here. It accelerates here. So, they are not equal. This is negative. We come here. And here will be positive. So, that is just the meaning of retardation. So, for calculating retardation here, you have to consider here. So, therefore, so, let's find the retardation. Our retardation will now be, so we have retard, retardation A will now be, will be, it will be equal to slope of CB. So, therefore, our A will now be CE over EB. And uh, which will give us uh, 40 
minus 0 over 160 minus 180, which will give us 40 over minus 20. That is just the mini. So it will now give us minus 2 meter per second scale. It is minus because it's retardating. And what is mean by retardating means that it applying the break to the journey. So that is all about the solution for this. And uh, don't forget once again to subscribe to the channels and share the video. So we still continue with a very good example, at least to make you to understand how to use graph to solve uh, the acceleration and velocity time graph. So let's continue. So we have another question. A body at rest is given an initial uniform acceleration of 8.0 meter per second scale for 30 seconds. So that is acceleration. After which the acceleration is reduced to 5.0 meter per second scale for the next 20 seconds. The body maintains the speed attained for 60 seconds, after which it is brought to rest in 20 seconds. So let me read it again. A body at rest is given an initial uniform acceleration of 8.0 meter per second scale for 30 seconds, after which the acceleration is reduced to 5.0 meter per second scale for the next 20 seconds. The body maintained the speed attained for 60 seconds, after which it is brought to rest in 20 seconds. That is just a question. So the question now says that draw the velocity time graph of the motion using the information given above. Using the graph, calculate after you have drawn. That is the B. Maximum speed attained during the motion. Two, average retardation as the body is being brought to rest. Three, total distance travel during the first 50 seconds. Three, average speed during the same interval. So in solving these questions, so let's try to find to draw the diagram, the graph, the velocity time graph. The first thing you do, you have been given the velocity. We have been given the velocity to be V is equal to U plus A T. You know from the first statement, it said a body at rest is given an initial uniform acceleration. So therefore our since you start from uh, 0 plus 30 times 8, because 30 it is the, uh, the, the time, the 30 seconds, that is 8 times 30 in any form. So we now have 240 meters per second. That is the maximum velocity being given in a way to draw the velocity time graph. So this is how the graph looks like after you have drawn. So this is the 240 that I'm able to calculate. After moving to this point B, it said, the question said that after which the acceleration is reduced to, it's reduced to 5.0 meter per second. It's come down to C. So the moment it's come down to C, something happened. How do we get 140? You know that you now apply V is equal to U plus AT. For applying this, our initial velocity will now turn to 240 plus. Because it decelerates minus 5 times 20. So, whereby our V will now be our V, that is 100 minus 240, our V will now give us 140 meter per second after it has been decelerated. So that is why, as it's come down here, that's why we have 140 
uh, meter per second there because it has applied a break a little bit. So at this point, no, is he continuing now? Said that after 20 uh, seconds, so you have you had the 20 to 30, it will now give you 50 seconds. He now said the body maintained the speed attained for 60 seconds. So you will now add the 60 with 50 to give you 110 seconds, which is brought to rest at 20 seconds. So 20 plus 110 give us 130. So, so that is how the graph looks like. So give you 130 seconds at total time use. Now, the B part of the question now say that you should calculate the B part of the question says, the B, he said, the maximum speed attained. Maximum speed attained So the maximum speed attained will now give us 240 meter per second because that is the maximum speed before it retardates. So now the question answer that find the second question say, average retardation as the body brought to rest. Let me explain for you from the diagram. When the body brought to rest, this is where it brought, uh, brought to rest. So the final retardation starts from here. So average retardation when it brought to rest, we consider to be DE here. E is here. We have a DE. So the average retardation will be here. That is the slope of DE. And the slope of DE will be 1 because it will be 140. Because this 140 is higher because average retardation is here. So this 140 divided by 110 minus 130. That is the slope. So let's try to do it. So the B2, the B2, the average retardation, average retardation will now be the slope of slope of DE and the slope of DE so the slope of DE will now give us 140 minus 0 over 110 minus 130 which is equal to 140 over minus 20 which give us minus seven meter per second square. So this is the average retardation. So let's study the third question according to them. The third question says that average speed during the same interval as three. So what I'm just trying to say from the graph here is they want to know the speed from O, B, C, J. So the area of triangle O, B, H plus area of trapezium H B C J. That is just the meaning. So let me let's solve it and get the final answer. So C the B theory. No, sorry, the B three is yes. The total distance travel during the fifty seconds. Yes, and I'm correct. So the total it will be the total distance travel will now be area of obcj which is equal to area of triangle obh plus area of trapezium Trapezium B C G H. So now let's now find it. Let's try to relate it one by one. So we now have so the distance will now give us the distance will be the half of 
30. That is half base times height. So the base is 30, the height is 240. Plus the area of trapezium will be half times the height. And the height there is 20. I will show you how it's 20. That is 240 plus 140. That is trapezium. So let me show you how do we get 20. You know, this is a trapezium now. So here will be the height. You had 140 plus 240 times height. So our height will be 50 minus 20. So that is what we're trying to explain. That one I try to explain in that area. So we now have so 30 times 240. That is 30 times 120. We give us 3600 plus 3800, which is equal to 7000 meter 7400 meter so the fourth part of the question is the average speed so the average speed of this is so the total distance traveled you know within the 50 seconds so the average speed is 7400 over 50 is equal to 148 meter per second so that is the average speed within the range of 50 seconds. So that is the answer for that question. So we see how before we go to, we see we are still going to motion under gravity. So how does it work? What do you understand by motion under gravity? But before I go to the motion under gravity, let me see solve another meaningful examples again. If a car, this is another example, if a car starts from rest and moves with a uniform acceleration of 10 meters per second squared for 10 seconds, the distance it covers in the last one second of its motion is. So, this is what you now do. Solution. Initial velocity U is equal to zero. Acceleration is equal to 10 meter per second square and T is equal to 10 seconds because it spends 10 seconds. So, but the question says that the distance it covers in the last one second. So, something will happen now. The V at 10 is 100 meter per second. Let's also find V at 9, at nine seconds because to get the least one seconds of emotion is the time between the ninth and the tenth seconds. And the distance covered in the last one second of the motion will now be the distance in ten seconds minus distance in nine seconds. So let's find the velocity of distance of, of, of ninth seconds. So now you now say that let's find the V will give you v is equal to u plus a t should be zero plus so our a which is 10 times the nine seconds will give you 90 meter per second that's what you now have in the diagram above here that's why i draw it 100 when it is 100 and when it is uh, 90. so to now find the distance cover in one second, so the last seconds will be the area of zero. Will be the area of zero. Zero B is zero B. Uh, this is C D. Zero B C minus zero E D. So, which is area of triangle, which will give you so the distance will now be half times that is uh, from here to here is 10 half base what is the height height is 100 minus half 
times so half base that is 9 times 90 so now to now get the value it will be this will give you that is 50 that will be 500 minus 405 so the distance now traveled in the last one seconds to now give you 95 meter so that is your trick in finding the distance in last one seconds that is that is the trick that we use to to find so i believe from the example i have been solving in this video we make you to solve every question relating to acceleration velocities and time so therefore we are still going to the motion under gravity what is the meaning of motion under gravity so let me just so therefore let's start another subtopic again try to watch the video end, to the end so you're able to solve any question pertaining to any question so far motion under gravity so this is what we want to talk about now the gravitational acceleration when an object is thrown upward or released from a height its motion is governed or affected by gravity so when you are throwing something from up down or from an height according to what he said its motion is being governed or affected by gravity what do you what do you the meaning is this an object throw upward experiences a negative acceleration because as it's moving upward it experiences a negative acceleration because its motion is in opposite direction to the gravitational pull of it that's all the meaning you must understand that fact on the other hand on the other hand, when an object falls down or is released from a height, it experiences positive acceleration, G, because its motion is in the same direction as that of gravitational attraction to the earth. You have to consider these two conditions in solving questions. Let me read it again. On the other hand, when an object falls down or it's released from a height, it experiences positive acceleration because its motion is in the same direction as that of the gravitational attraction. So now, you know, we have, we have uh, four equations of motions, which the first one says V is equal to u plus a t another one say s is equal to u t plus half a t square we have b square is equal to u square plus 2 a x so there's some condition i say you must follow one the first condition is x let's consider this condition very well he said one he said for a body for a body thrown upward for a body throw upward the following equation are apply if a body is thrown upward meaning that v is equal to u minus gt because he has the acceleration has turned to negative. Another thing we have to come across is H is equal to UT minus half GT square. So these are the formula to use in case the body is thrown upward. And V is equal to V squared is equal to U squared minus 2GH. I believe you're able to get what I'm trying to explain now. You know, it's quite different from, you see, V is called a UT. You know, this one has already having a different condition now. So when it, when the body throw up, we have V is equal to U minus GT. H is equal to UT minus 
ut minus half gt squared and a v squared is going to u squared minus 2gh. So let's go to the second condition. The second condition says that so the second condition for a body falling downward for a body for all a body release a body release from a height So the following equation will be V is equal to U plus GT, H is equal to UT plus half GT squared, V squared is equal to U squared plus 2G each. That is all. So now let's, you know, I come up across H across g so let me try to write it out so to know the the, the meaning of in case we have been given one ah uh, the our v indicates final velocity in meter per seconds our u indicates Initial velocity in meter pass in means that the unit H indicates height in meter where T indicates time in seconds where G indicates acceleration doing to gravity in meter per second square so at the same time these are the meaning of what I've been written since so there are some things that come on you must put in place you must remember in case you are given a question let me write it out for you one you must remember in solving any questions relating to motion under gravity. One, when an object, when an object is, is thrown upward, when an object is thrown upward, it's its final velocity at its highest point, which is V is equal to zero. So when an object is thrown upward, its final velocity at its height at that point, the V must be zero. See, this is an object. It thrown upward. It reaches this place. At here, this is the maximum height. V will be equal to zero meter per second. That is just the meaning. This is the object. At here, the V have value. But at here, the, for the object, the V does not have any value again that is the first condition so now when it throw upward let's also talk about the second condition let me relate the second condition the second condition says that when an object when an object fall down falls downward When it falls downwards or is released, is released from a height, 
its initial velocity u is equal to zero meter per second. So maybe this is the object is released down to here. So he said when an object falls downward or is released from a height, its initial velocity must be zero. You must consider that factor. Don't forget, in case you are given any questions, those are the things that you must put in place. So we also have a third condition. Let's have a third condition. The third condition says that the time it takes an object takes an object to travel upward is the same the same time it takes to come down let me tell you the meaning of this the time it takes an object to travel upward is the same time it takes to come down whereby our g is equal to 10 meter per second scale so these are the three conditions we are not going to solve an example now that relates how these three conditions will work and how you are going to get it better and easy so let's start solving an example now now i want to the the, the third uh, rules that i gave i want to give an example to it now at exactly two hours zero zero minutes zero zero seconds a pendulum ball is thrown vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 75 meters per second. At what time the bulb return to the ground? Recall, at what time the bulb return to the ground? Because it was thrown up, which we are able to say that when a body throw up, the G will be negative. So let's start solving now. So as it's throw up, you know that initial velocity U, our initial velocity is equal to 75 meter per seconds. And our G is 10 meter per second squared. Our final velocity V is, is called zero meter per second. So we are looking for the time. Now the condition is this, you know, the equation containing, you know, it is when the body is true up, we have U minus GT because the, the pendulum move upward. So therefore, let's apply the final values, which is zero is equal to initial velocity is 75 minus 10 times t so therefore we have uh 10 t is equal to 75 our time is equal to 7.5 seconds i want you to understand a fact now what is the fact the fact is this I said the earlier times that our time is 7.5 seconds now. It says is the same time taking to go upward, which is the same time it takes to come down. Therefore, time taking to return to the ground from the moment of true is so we now give us to return, you know, you use 7.5 to go up plus 7.5 to come down. That's just the meaning. 
7.5 to go up, 7.5 to come down. This is just the mini. Let me see. Let me tell you the diagram. 7.5 seconds to go up. 7.5 seconds to come down. So according to the rules, the rules let us learn that the times it takes an object to travel upward is the same time it takes to come down. Don't forget these rules because it will make you to get the exact value of the answer. So therefore, time to return will now be time to return. We now be to be two hours, you know. But when I had this together, it will give us 15 seconds. So it's now be two hours, is zero zero minutes and 15 seconds. So, so the final answer is two hours, zero zero. 15 seconds so that is the final answer for that uh, question zero zero so that's your the trick so let me also solve another example that can make you to understand it better let's see another meaningful example he said calculate the maximum height a ball of mass 1.2 kilogram we attain if projected vertically upward with an initial velocity of 7 meter per seconds let's try to write out the given values the first given value is u is equal to 17 meter per seconds the v given the final velocity, remember, the maximum height, you know, is zero. The G given 10 meter per second scale. Height is unknown. So equation required to use here is V squared is equal to U squared minus 2GH, which will give you is zero squared is equal to 17 squared minus 2 times 10 times h. So let's try to make it meaningful. You see that 17 squared, you say 20 h will be equal to 17 squared, will give you 289. So let's try to make h. Sorry for capital letter. Let us make H as a subject of the formula, which we have 289 over 20, which will give you 14.45 meter. That is all. We're able to see the question very so simple. Calculate the maximum height of a ball of mass 1.2 kilogram. We attain if projected vertically upward with an initial velocity of 17 meter per second. So you have been given U, V, 0, G, and so we apply the formula because it moves upward. So that is why you must have V square is equal to U squared minus 2 G H. We have so many examples that will make you, and I believe that as you watch this video to the end now. No matter all questions that you face, you're able to solve it. And you can call my number for any questions for a private class for you to know more better about physics. What, do you, what topic you need, we are able to call me and ask any question in the YouTube channel. Ask me questions and let's reason together. And also try to subscribe. This is the only way you can pay me all. That is my game. Pay, subscribe and try to share this video. So let's solve another example. You see this question is a, a little bit uh, easy to solve, but you must uh, try to listen attentively. An object falls freely from a height of 20 meters. So 
onto the roof of a building five meter high. Calculate the velocity with which the object strike the roof. Let me try to draw a diagram for you to get it better. This is a roof. This is a roof of a building. So this is a building. So it's falling from here. It's strike here. So, but the height of this is uh, five meter. So, and the total height from the ground to where it's coming from is 25. So the height that used to strike the roof will be 25 meter minus 5 meter. So you we, are, we are using 20 meter now. That is just the meaning. I have able to draw the diagram. Recall, because it does not reach the ground, because it does not reach the ground, automatically we still have an initial velocity to be a zero. We have an initial velocity to be zero meter per second. Yes. Because it does not reach a ground. So our G is 10 meter per second. So now it is now the V that we need. We now say that V squared is got to U squared plus 2 G H. So we now say V squared is equal to what is our U? Is 0 squared plus 2 times 10 times 20. So V square is equal to 400. So by finding the square root of the both side, square root of V squared and the square root of 400. So it will cancel this. So our V will now be doing to 20 meter per second. So V is equal to 20 meter per. So that is your. So that is your the logic because the height it forces is 25. It's falling down from 25. But the height of the building is 5 meter. But for striking the, the, the top of the building, so it means 20. So the, the, the energy used, the velocity used, is under the 20 meter as a distance. So let me also solve another question. So a carpenter working at a construction site mistakenly drops his armor from a height of 120 meters. How long does it take to reach the ground? So this is a very beautiful question. Let me read it again. A carpenter working at a construction site mistakenly drops his armor from a height of 120 meters. How long does it take to reach the ground? So this is the armor. Let me draw it for you to see. Mistakenly draw the armor to read the ground. So as it drop it the ground, so with height with height of one twenty five meter. So now, because it's dropping downward, you have initial velocity to be zero meter per seconds. We have our G to be 10 meter per second squared, and we are looking for the time it reaches. So, what we are going to use is the height, which is UT plus half GT squared. And remember, it has zero. Our height is 125. We are looking for time. It's zero times T plus half times 10 times T squared. So mean that 125 is equal to 5t square. So let's try to divide both sides by 5. We have t squared is equal to 125 divided by 5 making 25. So our t will now be square root of 25, which is equal to 5 seconds. So that is just the answer for that question. So once again, I'm using this opportunity to remind you to subscribe to this channel so you are able to see many video to watch many to watch and to have a very good learning subscribe to our youtube channels and do all things that you believe you can do to promote us 
So I really so much appreciate for you watching this video. Thanks. Thanks for watching.